Two weeks ago, I went to Qinghai, to Xining, the capital of Qinghai, to meet two really cool girls. One is Miriam, you've seen in the last video, if you've watched the AMWF love story from Qinghai. And I also went to see Shifa, an Indonesian YouTuber who I met online, so cool. And in this video, Shifa and I had just gotten up, by the way, that's why we look so tired, <laughs> like we literally have no energy whatsoever. But we we were in the hostel and we were just making a little video before we had to go out and do sightseeing all day. So in this video, Shiva and I are going to talk about the safety of female, solo female travelers in China. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today I am together with my beautiful friend here from Indonesia. Can you introduce yourself? <laughs> Hello, um, I'm Shifa and um, I'm from Indonesia. I moved to China since January early this year, but it's been on and off. Not until last June, I'm technically like settling down. Uh, and um, no, longer traveling, <laughs> no longer traveling around. Um, I left Indonesia last year, August, so it's been a year that I'm not home. Uh, <laughs> long time. A long time. And um, before moving to China, I was traveling long term for five months. So. And she's making YouTube videos. <laughs> you should check out her channel. Yeah. She's being so modest here. Uh, it's uh, Shifa Adriana. Yeah, um, I'll put a link up here and a link in the description box mm -hmm. as well so you can find her and remember to subscribe and everything. In today's video, we are going to discuss the safety of traveling as a solo female traveler in China and we're going to compare it a little bit to Southeast Asia because we have both been traveling there as well. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so without further ado, let's just get started. You've been traveling quite a lot around Southeast Asia, right? Mm, yeah, I mean, that's technically the places that I've traveled to um, right. since 2014. Mm. So I've gotten around to knowing like what it's like um, in terms of like the feelings, safety issues, if mm -hmm. you like. So what's your favorite destination in Southeast Asia? Um, so I've been to all, all of Southeast Asian countries except um, Lao and Brunei. Um, I'm, I, yeah. don't, <laughs> I don't, because I don't need any visa to go to Southeast right. Asia. So in terms of my story, I do have like insufficient fun and everything, but I still want to travel and so it's a lot easier for me just to go within the same continent, mm. but still get that traveling feeling. Cheap. In terms of favorite destination, I would say Vietnam and mm. it hasn't changed since 2015. Um, uh, it took, like, I've, I thought I wanted to like Myanmar more, but it's not that I hate Myanmar. I think I just had a little bit of rough time there and it always give different feeling to how you feel about it. Yeah, I know. That's the same for me. That's, we talked about this before. Mm -hmm. So her favorite is Vietnam and I was like, yeah, I've been there, but I'm not sure I'll go back. And that was basically just because of a heartbreak and a Vietnamese yeah. kind of Vietnamese <laughs> guy. And <laughs> Always relate to that. Personal <laughs> yeah, like last yeah. time I went to a Vietnamese restaurant with my friends and they were like, uh, do you want, what do you want? And I was like, well, I definitely, I'm not going to eat the pho. So that's like a chicken uh, noodle, yeah, yeah, soup, noodle dish. soup dish. <clears throat> and I'm like, I'm not going to eat that because this guy, long time ago, he made this dish for me. <laughs> on like this, our second date. And since then, I was just like, I'm never going to eat that stupid thing again. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 correct. Because it always <laughs> relates to your personal story. Yeah. With me, uh, why I like Vietnam so much, because my first time riding outside of my country was in Vietnam. Um, and the feeling that I had over that time, like how much it gave such in encouragement and <clears throat> personal strength, um, yeah, that's yeah, the feeling right. that I remembered when I was in Vietnam. So, so it's cool. always like the same feeling over and over when I visit Vietnam. Oh, yeah, I've been there like for five times since two years and yeah. she's driving on her own i mean like, i mean it's easy bike, right? yeah, yeah 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 the motorbike the, the, motorbike. the manual motorbike but, but it's yeah, easy to, so to cool. drive around and in vietnam it's just the, the country is characteristic it's not like um, in china like, i don't 
try like ride around it I took just... me four years before i started biking <laughs> and i want to start learning i uh, want to drive here as well but yeah it takes uh it takes a while now somebody's gonna start playing guitar uh, yay anyways yeah <laughs> we don't want any copyright claims here guys so <laughs> it's like shh please wait for a second so if we try to compare southeast asia to china so for me the first time i went to southeast asia i came to thailand in bangkok in 2015 mm -hmm. and then all of my things got stolen <laughs> And that's why I don't want to go back to Thailand again. Oh, and wow. I know it might be my own fault, but I still am like, ooh, that was a bad experience. Yeah, yeah, especially it was your, it yeah. gave a very bad first yeah. impression. It was like the first night staying there. Mm. And I am a, I'm a very naive person and I come from Denmark, you know, so yeah, I just trust like everyone. Everything's safe, yeah. yeah, that's my issue because I've been traveling mostly in China and China, to me anyways, According to my own experience, China is extremely safe. Like I've been driving like black cabs during nighttime and like I've been going walking around, like walking home from parties alone. I've never ever experienced anything. I've left bags with strangers. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've bought tickets, illegal tickets from people I didn't yeah. know. Like never have I ever had any bad experiences during the four years I've mm -hmm. been here. Mm -hmm. So that's my personal experience that I feel most safe in China, actually. Mm -hmm. I think as a female solo traveler, I always travel on my own as well, she does too. And uh, I've had a really good experience in China. I think the only problem is actually the language barrier. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but it's also correct when she mentioned that she's <clears throat> from Denmark. When, meanwhile, I'm from the <laughs> continent. I'm from Indonesia, where... Do you want to... Do you want to... <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you're from Indonesia. So yeah, so technically um, I'm a lot more equipped with how the safety issue in Asia mm. in general. Because it does yeah. have a, a lot more similarities. Yeah. Um, in terms of travel, uh, like safety issue, I was quite surprised. Uh, I mean, it took me some time to realize how safe China is. I don't have to worry so much about. <laughs> I don't have to worry so much about the idea of walking alone at night mm. or getting into a taxi cab with like alone in different city, a new city yeah. with like with. Being, they turn on the taxi meter. Yeah, and that's all. And they're not trying to. <laughs> they're not trying to like. Getting, fool you, yeah, right? fool you by by driving you around. No. I mean, like they have so many customers. So why, yeah. why, why, why? <laughs> like, why would, would he bother? Waste the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah waste the time. And um, I, I feel like it's also because China is not like a tourist country. Correct. Like, so, like Thailand. Yeah, and other countries. yeah. So they don't also, really, they don't really. When they see us as foreigners, they're like, oh, this is so exciting. Hello, mm, foreigner. Mm, they're you know? not trying to get how, money out of you. No, yeah. they're like, how can we help? And I think that's why I've never had any issues. Yeah, like that. correct. Yeah. That's that's why. Um, mo most of the time what people are experiencing I spoke to a Spanish guy yesterday and how he felt about how he feels about Malaysia and Indonesia in general mm. like it's like when he went to a little bit more secluded area people are still trying to get money yeah. out of them like yeah. trying to help but at the end like they expect money meanwhile no, here in China um, they're not it's all yeah they don't speak English of course you don't you don't expect them even uh. Um, but then they're still try, trying to help. Mm, but yeah, they, I know sometimes that they're trying to help to save their face, as mm. they say. Even <laughs> like, but they're just trying to help. So yeah. don't get to stress about it. Sometimes people just no. want to help, even though they don't know. <laughs> yeah, mm. I always just I always just tell people to remember to learn a little bit of Chinese beforehand, mm, or correct. bring a dictionary. Mm. Bringing a dictionary is like number yeah. one. Yeah, on I have my Chinese English dictionary. Yeah. I even have that too. Like, <laughs> a few days ago, I didn't know how to say high altitude because we're on really high altitude level right now, and I can feel it. It's hard for me to breathe sometimes. Mm. So I was like, <laughs> how do I say this? You know, I wanted to ask how high it actually is. Yeah. So I just click, click, and dictionary tells me, and yeah. I'm like, thank you yeah. very much. So <laughs> if you, um, there's like trans application yeah translation mm. on phone which is a lot easier sometimes they can speak it up and then sometimes we can record and then they translate mm. um, but in terms of conventional wires if you want to buy a pocket dictionary um, there is Oxford 
English Chinese yeah. um, pocket dictionary. You can find the yeah. small one. Yeah. Small one. But I would definitely suggest the phone one. The it's phone one is a lot easier. easier. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Or oh, make yeah. a Chinese friend. Get a WeChat account and make a Chinese friend. <laughs> or make a Chinese boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Or a Chinese boyfriend. That's how you learn Chinese very fast. Uh, <laughs> just a little tip from here. <laughs> Anyways. From the expert. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hey, hey. Anyways, do we have any like last minute stay safe? So China, it is. I mean, like I don't really okay, know. from pers per perspective wise, it's very general to say that it's uh, China is safe, but it is mm -hmm. because sometimes you know when the country is safe in general, but you are your level of awareness is high because you're trying to be precautious of things going to happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. but in China, you don't mm -hmm. feel no. that much, so your regard is not is, mm -hmm. is not as high mm -hmm. as a traveler. Um, you. you they just don't do it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted to say too. Yeah. They just just trust people here, you know. Yeah. Like, they of course, if you go to like the most touristy places, such as like the Forbidden City on the back of the Forbidden City, those that the ones in the hutongs who are biking you around, always get a price before you do that because they know how it goes with foreigners and uh, prices. But um, I would say apart from those places. You are pretty. Safe. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, when a place is very. So that's exposed. only a money thing. It's correct, not even correct, like correct. Stealing. Or anything, yeah, they're yeah. not. Tr yeah, but the thing, uh, people would think that it's scam. But then again, uh, it, sometimes when a place is very exposed to tourists, it changed the way how the society, yeah. like the people, live. It. They um, obviously learn a little bit. Yeah, from about that about well. money. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. other than that, China is huge. So mm. if you get out of the major cities it's so easy for you to get a lot more I would say genuine experiences mm. um, when you get frustrated a little bit more yeah. because of the language yeah. Yeah. don't expect them to be able to speak with, no. um, English, English. Never, no no never no expect never that. Um, that would just make you disappointed yeah <laughs> correct, correct. Yeah. yeah so so just uh, take care of your stuff but uh, but don't worry. Would you like to mention a little bit about food safety? Because mm -hmm. some people think that it's a big problem. Yeah. Food safety, okay, so the thing is, if you buy too much street food from the, the street vendors, you might get a bad stomach ache if you're from like a country where the food is very, um, very like mostly clean. European. I would say Europe, yes, mm -hmm. um, Europe, America, those kind of places, the Western countries. And I've also heard a lot of like food safety problems, but I've never really had anything else Correct. compared to a bad stomach here. And Co there. Correct. But it's only like for half a day, so it's not really. And it's my own fault because I know where I shouldn't eat because I have a sensitive stomach. But I think in general you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. it's not you'll be fine. Problem. I mean the fact that we. Are here still talking, <laughs> not sick. Um, it's still working. It's generally <laughs> fine if you're not so fussed about it. But yeah, no safety issue, uh, yeah. food safety issue. It's not as bad as the no, the, the media, media is portraying. <laughs> it's like it was really horrible. Everything yeah. is fake in China. No. Yeah. What guys. do you read in the media? Just take <laughs> take out like ten percent of that uh, and experience yourself. So. Yeah. Come here. Mm. Yeah, that was all for this uh, video. Remember to check out Shifa's uh, channel. I'll put a link below and also up here. And we'll talk to you guys soon again. Hope you're having a great day, evening, wherever you're in the world. And Ling Ling and Shifa is out. See ya and Zai Bye. Bye. Bye.